Thank you. I would like to thank the organizing committee for this uh, invitation. During the next uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to tackle briefly what are the indications and what is the impact of targeting the HER2 uh, pathway. And I will also go for some of the mechanisms of resistance that uh, may help us in understanding the failure uh, of these uh, uh, treatments. So first, uh, uh, I think uh, in first line of uh, 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 treatment of advanced uh, uh, gastric cancer, um, uh, trastuzumab, I mean, is the only success so far we have in this setting because most of the trials considering anti-angiogenics or even MET inhibitors uh, did fail in this setting of uh, uh, when trying to improve uh, overall survival. So the, the TOGA trial was uh, very clean in showing that the addition of trastuzumab to platinum-based um, uh, chemotherapy in the first-line setting was able to increase response rate and also to prolong disease-free and overall survival. Another important point, which is uh, not very useful for the practice, but is important for the concept of the validity of the target, is that when um, uh, HER2 is uh, uh, amplified uh, to a better, uh, to a higher uh, extension, so when it's quantified, there is a clear relation between the um, level of amplification and the effect of, this, uh, of the addition of trastuzumab. So blocking the HER2 pathway could be more, is, is in fact more efficient in a, a, a tumor with higher amplification. However, uh, we have another series of uh, trials indicating that the data we had in breast cancer is not fully reproducible in uh, gastric cancer. And these start with the two trials of lapatinib, which is uh, commonly used for this purpose in uh, breast cancer. However, in the LOGIC trial, first line, in combination with uh, oxaliplatin and capecitabine, although there is some type of clinical effect, because response rate is increasing when lapatinib it is added. However, there is no effect in overall survival. And the same feature can be observed in the Titan second line trial, uh, uh, showing that uh, the addition of lapatinib uh, to paclitaxel was able to increase response rate from 9 to uh, um, 70, uh, 27%. However, no effect in uh, progression free or overall survival. So uh, we cannot recommend the, the, the uh, addition of lapatinib in this, in this setting. And uh, another approach that has been uh, successful in breast cancer is the addition of TDM1. Uh, so it's a kind of, uh, it's, it's a second, GATD was planned as a second line uh, trial, and also there was uh, no effect. Uh, on survival by the uh, addition of TDM1 upon progression in first line when uh, standard uh, platinum-based chemotherapy plus trastuzumab um, is, is, was used. So then I think it's important briefly to understand what are the potential mechanisms of resistance to trastuzumab at other anti her to therapies in advanced gastric cancer. Uh, we should consider the co-amplification of HER2 and HER1 uh, EGFR together with uh, HER2, the heterodimerization with HER2, the, the presence of HER3 mutations, the co-amplification of MET, and also the FGFR autocrine loops that may play a role in this setting. As you know, uh, to become active, um, uh, HER2 and uh, EGFR and HER3, they have to uh, dimerize uh, having homodimers, that means HER2 plus HER2, or having heterodimers, uh, HER2, uh, HER3, or HER2 with HER1. What is very well known is that when uh, HER2 dimerizes with HER3, this is very potent in activated the PI3K 
kindness pathway and then becoming independent from the initial uh, um, activation of uh, HER2. So we should consider, and there are some studies uh, with uh, um, patients derived xenograph showing that a complete inhibition of uh, HER2, uh, for example with trastuzumab or lapatinib, is not enough to completely abide the signal of uh, uh, these uh, tumors. And when we consider the combination of those, and then we are tackling also uh, HER3 or EGFR, this uh, approach could be also more effective. In the same model, when, when uh, the complete inhibition of HER2, I mean the irreversible inhibition of HER2, HER3, by the use of uh, afatinib is done, then we can observe also, together with dual uh, inhibition, a uh, better uh, control of tumor growth in these PDX-derived models. Another critical issue is that uh, sometimes MET amplification is very frequently, almost in half of uh, uh, C-MET amplified uh, tumors, we can observe co-amplification of EGFR, HER2, or HER3. And this dual amplification uh, uh, or co-amplification could have implications in, have in, in fact in this study when patients were treated not only with trastuzumab but also with the addition of crisotinib which is a well established MET inhibitors, the anti-tumor effect was uh, more prominent. Finally, uh, it has been shown by, a, by, by an Italian a group that uh, not only in in vivo uh, uh, and in vitro models, but also in some biopsies coming from patients uh, with at least three clinical cases, when patients are treated with uh, um, uh, uh, chemotherapy plus trastuzumab because they were HER2 amplified, there is a uh, in the post-progression uh, situation, there is a uh, very important uh, um, uh, activation of the FGFR uh, pathway that may uh, uh, make us to help in understand this, this uh, uh, process. So as a conclusion, I would say that uh, concerning anti-HER2 therapies in advanced gastric cancer, that HER2 amplification is to be determined as a must in all metastatic uh, cases, that the addition of trastuzumab plus uh, cisplatin and fluorouracil or capecitabine improves outcome in uh, this group of uh, HER2 amplified uh, uh, patients. Um, its role in preoperative or adjuvant therapy is under investigation. Uh, gastric cancer behaves very different from uh, breast cancer uh, concerning the HER2 activation uh, uh, pathway and the mechanism of uh, resistance are diverse and require better understanding although this is an area uh, with uh, some role for personalized medicine. So thank you very much.